so uh, you, you guys really like the last hot take video like really like the last hot take video like it got like a thousand views in like one hour like not what i say one it got a thousand views in under a day which was low-key crazy i'm not gonna lie but it, in the comment section of that video i asked you guys if you guys had any takes so i can make a part two and this is the part two video so yeah so we're just gonna read some of you guys takes i'm just gonna give my thoughts basically what we did last time all right i think the dude with the jacket and the official art will be the ones who gives the clothes and stuff hold on i don't even know hold on let me look this up real quick I don't, I don't know exactly what guy in the jacket you're talking about, like, I'm looking at the art now. The guy in the jacket, that's the one that sells clothes and stuff, is it? I don't, I'm so, I'm kind of confused of what they're, what, what he's talking about, so. Next take comes from Game Destroyer. Easy, I hate the fact Splatoon focuses way too much on multiplayer, not enough on making a balanced game for those who like single player. They are locking out a huge chunk of profit, hence why we need an arena most are an arena mode based on multiplayer and recon is useless currently hence why it can be used for arena and the campaign doesn't train you in multiplayer and recon can if they just do cpu battles and allow us allow us to earn multiplayer xp shelter ticks and catalog xp same from time one run same with time one run same run can work the exact same as it does currently but solo and i'm making the solo so on offline would help make a balance for those who play casual versus those who play 24 7. it also won't be tracked from multiplayer either basically just a good idea to balance the game in mind that's your hot take this is this is probably the most realest thing i think anyone's ever said like nintendo like the whole i know like the whole point is to sell nintendo switch online you know what i'm saying like play like it's platoon is an online shooter but to be fair the only thing we have is so like for solo content is recon for like maybe two minutes and the story mode and then if you want to play an extra story mode you have to pay twenty dollars to get it so like i feel like they just need to i feel like, like the game would do so much better because like i i was in the situation when i had splatoon 2 when i first got splatoon 2 i didn't realize there was a nintendo switch online thing for it so for a good month or so i had to basically just play the, the, the story mode because i had nothing else to play until i had like the until i got used a free trial and stuff but still like when you're stuck playing the story mode for that long like you need something else to do offline and i feel like more like, more copies would sell and they still get more nintendo switch online copies that's not stopping anything really because people still want to play online for smash and other stuff but for splatoon like we have a story mode like we need like we basically need like a re like what what game destroyer is saying here we need a recon mode that's literally what we need like a better recon well we have a recon we can make a recon mode, we can like fight AI and stuff, you know, just for fun, like, this, this, just to, just to be able to do something, like, and even an offline summer room, like, that would work perfectly. I just don't, like, Nintendo just obviously won't do it because, you know, money, but it'd be really good if they would, because that, if it's Splatoon, would be so much of a better game than it is now. Instead, of, we have to rely on side order to cookie save everything right now. <laughs> Zavin has a, steer, has a theory here. I have a theory that this well, the whale skeleton that can be briefly seen in the first show will be the main antagonist. I believe it's a Bake Kujura, a ghost skeleton whale from Western Japanese followers is said to bring bring curses. I believe it's starting to come true as a skeleton robot fish seem to have a similar appearance to the whale skeleton. I mean, this wouldn't be wrong, but I feel like am, there has to be like somebody controlling it. Like, I feel like the whale skeleton will... It probably... You know, no, because like I don't even think... like. Uh, let's go real life for a second because i don't even think sharks really attack you like that unless you provoke them or if they like smell your blood i don't think like they would just like the whale skeletons would just attack you without like anything like someone has to be like controlling them you know making the making an arm like someone has to organize the whole thing basically and that's why i think like i said my last video i think it's marina or i think it's agent four behind it or even both of them i don't know but it has to be something like that arthur says I think the fact that it looks like Agent Force to give a boost to the community and maybe it really is her or as a boss or a secret boss. I mean, I could see Agent 4 as a as an inner Agent 3 thing kind of. Like I feel like one like another 1v1, like Agent 4 and Agent 8, that could probably be the final boss, I'm not gonna lie. Or yeah, or even a secret boss, like that would be so much fun. Like because that is like you can't tell me. There's no way you can't tell me that's not Agent 4 in that picture. It looks literally just like her, the same little uh, ear, ear pieces and stuff, yeah, that, like, even the same hairstyle, I'm pretty sure, or, from what we can see, it looks like the same hairstyle, but I personally feel like, 
it's just it's the same thing. That's what that's what I feel. Like it's. <laughs> I feel like it's basically like they're linked together. Like Agent Four is gonna have a fight. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Agent Four is probably gonna be villain, and it would definitely boost the community a lot because even like side order by itself, when the game drops, it's gonna boost the community even more than it already has. Like it's the game's not even out yet, and it's already boosting the community. That's how big side order is gonna be. For Melon, Melonianus Neon has a few hottest takes. So, if Side Order isn't a fully randomized roguelite, example, every four has the same set of three levels, the same rewards, with the same difficulties, then it won't be fun. If swimming gets difficult enough, you'll lose on your first playthrough at least once or twice. These be as difficult as auto expansion and can be fully randomized in what three levels, difficulties, and rewards you get per four of the tower be fun at all. Otherwise, it will get stale very fast, even just for a first playthrough. For this, like, for this little first take, I low-key, I, I kind of agree with this. Because, like, if they're really going to execute this thing wrong, then what was the point of hyping it up this way? Like, I feel like they're going to do something. I mean, like, at this point, <laughs> this Splatoon community is literally just dying for new content other than the season updates and the challenges. But Side Order can either be the best thing to happen to Splatoon since Splatoon 2 Auto Expansion, or it can be the worst thing to happen to Splatoon since Splatoon 2. Alright, so what's the last thing that Since the new Splatfest that came out. That's good, that's good to get. That's probably one of the bad things that's happened recently. But it could probably be one of the worst things that happened to Splatoon if they do it wrong. And I feel like if they do it right, like, they do it amazing, like, that would be perfect. Just for everything. Like, it'd be good for content, it'd be good for the players, it'd be good for the community as a whole. That, like, that's what I really want to see from Side Order. Also, rewards are specifically are... Also, if rewards specifically are always tied to difficulty, it makes the difficult sy difficulty system really annoying. Because if you want a certain build and the rewards don't line up, you have to play you have to play harder or easier levels than what you wanted to get that get that build, making difficulty less of a choice you make to decide how much of a challenge you want and more of a hindrance to both new players and challenge runners. You want to play at higher difficulties, but still the freedom to select the build. Obviously, this gets fixed if there are difficulty settings that you make before a run, and the easy, medium, hard is in relation to a single four with the easy level one of four and the overall hard difficulty setting being equivalent to maybe a medium level in the overall easy difficulty setting this like so this like this guy's like main thing about cider is difficulty and i feel like that is like one of the most important like it's gonna it's obviously one of the most important parts of the dlc because like if it's too easy even like it's gonna be like so fast to get through it on your first playthrough and you're not gonna have fun like you're just gonna be running through like for example, like, Splatoon 2 story mode was pretty easy, like, I didn't have any problems with it. you basically just be doing that. Like, it'd basically just be a run of Spl a normal Splatoon campaign, a little bit easy, no, no, like, really fearsome challenges. But, like, if it's, like, hard, that would be amazing. Like, <laughs> I low-key want a hard game, because, dude, um, I would probably be stuck on that for hours, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but a harder take is that you want cider to be really hard like proper roguelike die die 30 times before your first one kind of hard or at least hard enough that you can't just exclusively play through the easy levels every floor and win within 30 minutes if you structure like a roguelike light slash light it's easy to get the progression through dying unlocking new story elements and characters slash weapons and dying again otherwise it won't be long enough to make the story entertaining even when the gameplay is fun i agree with all these takes like every single take that meliness and neon has wrote so like i literally agreed with everything like they've just been spitting like, they wrote a whole essay in the comment section, and they spit the entire time during it, too. This is probably one of the- it's like, if Melanist Neon gets their way, this will probably be one of the best- but, well, there's only been two DLCs. This will probably be the best Splatoon DLC. Like, out of the two we have already, it'll probably be the best Splatoon campaign in general. Like, it'll be the best- the best thing to happen in Splatoon. I, this will be perfect if they get their way. But if they don't get their way, we might be cut, I'm not gonna lie. And yeah, that's about it. Um, thank you guys for the support on my last hot take video, and thank you guys for watching this hot take video. If you guys have any more hot takes or anything you guys really just want to put in the comment section, y'all can. Uh, and yeah, that's basically it. Um, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'm, we're really close to 400 subscribers, and I really do want to hit 500 after we hit 400, like really soon. So that'd be nice if you could subscribe and yeah, like the video if you haven't already. Um, that's about it. All right, see you. Bye.